So, like, it's been an absolute car crash in Britain for, for re in recent months. But I suppose some people kind of think, oh, this is just a recent thing. But the reality is Britain has been slowly imploding for about a decade. Because it all started when David Cameron was the Prime Minister. And David Cameron was getting really, he was coming under fierce pressure from the right wing of the Tory party who were really fiercely pro-Brexit and they thought the EU was the great Satan and they wanted to get rid of the EU and they wanted to exit the EU and then he decided, you know what lads, I'm going to silence them, I'll have a referendum and we'll win the referendum and that'll be the end of the debate. Yeah. And we'll stay so, in the EU. And we'll stay in the, the EU and we'll just move on. So they had the referendum in 2016, which they lost and then Cameron resigned and then Theresa May took over and Theresa May was forced into this incredibly hardline Brexit that was just going to make it really difficult to do a deal. So she couldn't do the deal and then she had to go and then Boris Johnson took over and then Boris Johnson slowly unravelled over a period of uh, two years. Um, and then over the summer he, had, he just got caught in scandal after scandal. There was the, the breaching of the lockdown regulations yeah. again and again and again. And then there was the party that they didn't know was a party. And it was all this madness yeah. going on. Um, and, and then, of course, um, the, there was a, the election to, to decide on the next Tory leader and Rishi Sunak won the, ma the majority of the votes of the M MPs. But Liz Truss won the votes of the members of the Tory party. Oh. Um, and then she became a leader. And then yep. after the 44 days, you know, she lost a Home Secretary. She lost her um, Chancellor of the Exchequer. Uh, there was all sorts of shenanigans over... Was she always doomed to fail? Well, no, I don't think anybody thought she was going to fail that quickly. Right. I mean, and, but, and then, of course, there was the whole lettuce incident when they had... Um, the, the, and I, I kind of like the way the start, story started because so, <laughs> some one of the august writers in The Economist referenced the fact that who'd last longer, Liz Truss or Lettuce? And the people in the Daily Star saw this and thought, well, that's just brilliant. So they bought a lettuce and they put the lettuce on the front page and it was going to be like, who's going to last longer, Liz Truss or Lettuce? Oh and then they gave the lettuce to one of their staff and the, the staff member brought the lettuce home and gave it sunglasses and put it under disco lights <laughs> and was giving it Red Bulls to try and keep it going. And they were just doing what tabloids do so well. They were just having great crack with a deadly serious story. Yeah. And then, of course, she, 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 the lettuce is probably still going strong, as far as I can tell. <laughs> well, it's still Liz Truss is gone. Now we're at six. And then, and then we had the absolute pant to pantomime when Boris Johnson flew home from his holidays in the Caribbean to stand for the Tory party leadership yeah. again. Oh, yeah. God. Six weeks after he'd been forced out. And I don't know if you guys have seen the thick of it, or even Veep. Yep. You know, they, oh, and Veep kind of is thinking, the best program on television. If they had that as a plot line in yeah. Veep, you would have Nobody just said, would that's it. just outrageous. No, no. Absolutely. But so, and then he apparently had 102 MPs backing him, although no, only a significantly smaller number than that were publicly backing him. So he had some secret MPs backing him. And then on last Sunday night, he eventually announced that he, uh, he was going to pull out, which yeah. meant that Rishi Sunak was elected. Uh, as, as the new, new uh, Tory uh, leader and then subsequently as the new Prime Minister of, of Britain. Um, and that's where we are now. And that's where we are. And, the and thing what, what's your, what, do, what's your evaluation of Rishi then? Well, I mean, I, I hope he does well because we, we can kind of laugh about it and we're talking about it here in a light-hearted way. But it actually really matters that mm. Britain has a sensible, stable government mm -hmm. because we have a very strong relationship with Britain. Firstly, we just talk about the trade. I mean, billions of euro is import... We import billions of euros of our products to the UK and we import... Or, or, sorry, we export billions to them and we import billions more from them. So we need them as a reliable... Yep. Trust, uh, trustworthy trading yes, partner and for the sake of our, our economy. Yeah. But more importantly, I think we need the Northern Ireland, we need the, the, the Northern Ireland Protocol to be sorted out because we can't risk a return to a hard border uh, between uh, uh, North and South. We can't risk a return to violence and we can't risk all of those things that are on the edge because of this perilous yep. situation yep. in Britain. So while on one level you can kind of go, oh, look at them, they're supposed to be the, the, the cradle of democracy and they're like some class of banana republic. Mm. Um, we, we want them to do well. So I hope, and I think most sensible people would hope that Rishi Sunak will, 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 will restore a degree of credibility to the British democracy that we so desperately need. And we want that kind of stability and we want somebody who adopts a pragmatic approach to negotiations with the European Union, relationships between Ireland and the UK. And that's what we need. And it doesn't matter if it's a Tory leader or a Labour Party leader. Like, obviously, I would have my own 
personal political preferences, uh, preferences but yeah. they're irrelevant. And is he making the right kind of overtures so far well, I mean, in he, terms he of was, how we're going to be affected? Uh, yes, I mean, like, in that he hasn't said a great deal yet, but like, he, and there's been, you know, question marks about his cabinet, but at least what, one of the things he did when he appointed his cabinet, um, like he appointed people who didn't necessarily support him uh -huh. in the leadership role, yeah. and I think that's kind of key because in times past, what was happening was the people who were being appointed to high ministerial office in the UK were being appointed to it, not because they had any particular talents in that area. It, it was just because they had supported the leader who happened to have won mm, the election. Yeah, yeah. And that's not the way to govern it's, efficiently. It, it has you to want be the best to, person for the you, job. You, uh, you, yeah. you recruit the people who have the most talent or, the, or who are most adept at managing a situation, and they're the people that you want in power. So you just have to hope that it, 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 he restores that credibility and that degree of common sense that you need in any democracy. And that's what all the leaders of the European Union have been saying in recent days. Let's okay. just hope that this is us getting back to normal. And indeed, British politicians are saying, let's just hope things get back to the kind of boring, same old, same old. Because that's, in a way, you kind of want your politi politics to be kind of dull. Yeah, mm -hmm. dull days, good days. You know, like in the same say. way yep. that we didn't want Donald Trump to be, <laughs> <laughs> to be <laughs> tweeting about every, yeah. everything all the way through. But like, you just want it to be kind of fairly consistent.